beautiful day. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. Good to have your company. Depending on how this goes, this may become two videos because I'm in the process of repotting a few things that are pot bound in my opinion and they're growing new roots and I would like to have across the board a reticulous setup that somewhat looks similar to everything else. So my intention today is actually to repot my Lelia Flava into a square pot like this but bigger and then these two which is Regina and the Flava Solina into square pots like this as well. So the Flava Solina was in a semi-hydro setup to test the waters. It worked but I want them all to be the same with lava rock and ceramis but as I'm out of ceramis or I will be shortly and I'm sorry about the wind I hope it doesn't affect the mic too much I will be out of ceramis so I have Akadama here the bonsai growing substrate which is extremely wicking very water retentive and when it's wet, if you squish it, it actually falls apart much easier than Ceramis does. But I want to test it out. I want to give it a go for the Rapiculus Lelias. So let's get started with the Flava at least and see how far we get and what is going on there. So as you can see on a beautiful day, things get a little bit busier than normal. Now I have not soaked the Flava here. So we'll see how it comes out. But I do want to get this out of the pot. I want to have my Rapiculus Lelius be kind of equal looking. And I don't mind about pot size in this case because they are all staying outdoors and I have plenty of space outdoors. And I don't need the support either. Whatever grows out spike wise can stay as it is. So at least it, it's proof in this case. Oh, beautiful, look at this. What a sight. Well, it's proof that Rapiculus lelius can be grown in self-watering, semi-hydro setup. Why am I changing it? Well, I just mentioned I wanted everything to kind of look even. I don't want to break the roots down there, but they've attached themselves to the microfiber. Oh, it's gorgeous. Gorgeousness down in the pot. Let's see how I can get this. There we go. Thank you. Woohoo. Whoops. One collateral damage. What a shame. I'm going to show you something. That's a shame. Oh dear. Oh well. Now I feel a little bit silly for attacking this project, but I hope to feel better for it afterwards. This is amazing. Look at this gorgeous root system. Well, well, well. I hope I made the right call. I mean, it's going to be fine in the other setup, but what what a beautiful root system. And now I feel, like I said, a little bit like, why did you do this? Why didn't you just leave it alone? Anybody else get to that point when they do something and then think it's going to be better and then you see what you're up against? Oh, and then you have regrets. Well, I would like to save my, my support here. It's pretty tangled in the roots. My goodness, I'm going to face away from the wind as best as I can to keep protect the mic a little bit. This is a great orchid problem to have. And I'm probably going to regret trying to save my support as well. Well, 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 who'd have thought 
I knew she was doing well because of what I could see above the pot, but this I was not expecting, but I'm super pleased and I'm glad whoever has clicked on this video for the sake of seeing what Rapiculus Lelios might do in semi-hydro. Well, now you know if this is the choice or the method you want to grow your Rapiculus Lelia in. Here's your proof. It's fantastic. Great result, absolutely great result. There's a few dead tips at the end, but nothing much. I find the roots to the touch a little brittle, which is concerning because of what I'm doing here. Now that I've started, you know what? Once you pop, you can't stop. I've got to get go through with this. So patiently, there we go. Yeah, these are very, these are, they feel like the sprouts, bean sprouts. Look at this. Oh, wow. What is not to like? Oh gosh. So I'm just checking to see if there's anything else I need to remove, and I don't. Maybe I could be fussy and get in there and get the old roots out. I can do that. What a luxury, hey? So I hope that she is robust enough that being exposed to the air now, the roots don't just go, um, I'm done. Now, having seen what I've seen, I'm kind of contemplating whether to put Lekka back in, even if the pot changes. So these are all the dead roots from when I received the orchid and potted her up, and I used these for anchoring. She was not in a good state when I got her root in the root department. But she certainly is now. Super impressed. And now I'm super nervous. <laughs> it's not exactly the time of year that I would think, but Lelia, Rapiculus Lelias are different in their growing time frame. This is their time of year, fall, winter. This is where they come onto their own and start doing what they have to do while they've got water and uh, temperatures to be able to sustain themselves. In the summer, they pretty much don't do anything as the hotter months approach. Okay. That's enough. Drying up very quickly. Don't want that. There's not much going on at the bottom as far as dead roots is concerned. I'm just going to be a little bit finicky now that I see them and take that off. It's a branching root system. It's gorgeous. So the plan is a big square pot, semi-hydro style, not self-watering. And 
And to get the levels up, I'm going to crock with very hot, large lava rock. And then I'm going to fill around with leka, but I'm going to use the akadama as well. So that's a lot of lava rock in the bottom, but right to the holes. Let me just show you there, right to where the holes are right here. And let's see how she responds to this. Looks too high to me. Let's get a little bit out. And just let's sell this idea to the orchid that she has a much bigger pot for more roots. How about that? I'm going to set her up in the back. Where the old pseudobulbs are and fill up with some akadama before I do anything else so that the moisture retention is exactly the same maybe a bit more to encourage the roots to continue to stay moist and wet Now, because the substrate is dry, I'm just going to wet it down as I fill up. This is also very dusty stuff. It's not like ceramic dusty, it's more dusty than that. Okay, so this is my wicking material from the lava rock to the reservoir to make contact with the lava rock on the bottom, seep through and do the wicking for me because lava rock, when it's large like this, won't have the same efficiency at wicking than small lava rock. But for the sake of space, I don't want to be using so much small lava rock when I can just top it up and fill up the reservoir with large lava rock. And then just keep filling up a little bit more before we put some leka in. Just enough around the roots that are so used to leka in order not to risk in order not to risk them failing because of a different substrate. There we go. A little bit of the tippy tappy patty patty. Now because she has such a great root system. I'm not putting any sand in between. I'm letting the Akadama do that for me. Because of the fact that she's not so tiny and doesn't need that initial retention help. Okay, that would be that. At least I have somewhat managed to get the same media around the roots. I'm just going to put in a little bit more of the Akadama as opposed to sand. If this was a really small Rapiculus lelia and needed something around the roots to help with the closing off the gaps, I would put sand, but she is not of that category. 
In other areas, I would put ceramics, but for the time being, I'm holding back on the last of my ceramics that I have because I want to see what the other two are doing and need needing. And one of them is in pure lecker, and that one might need the ceramics that I have left. And this is small lava rock around the top just because it looks pretty and it kind of matches all my other ones. The small lava rock from a visual aspect. And I hope not to have to disturb her for many years to come now. keeping those roots as wet as possible because that's the environment they were used to. That's why I'm putting Akadama where they are sort of looking exposed. And I can observe how it works when I keep spraying it. Woohoo, my goodness. That worked well, I'm pleased. I got nervous when I saw how great the root system is. but I am pleased about how beautifully it's progressed. So I'm just spraying her in. We'll settle things down. You see how dark the Akadama gets? Hmm. There's a little bit of a gap over there. There we go. That's it. Lelia flower in the new house. Gorgeous root system, my goodness. And off she goes to be with the other ones. Seeing as I'm already over 20 minutes, I'm going to cut this short. I'm gonna grab the other ones and make this a part two. So thank you very much for this part one. If you're interested, tomorrow I will release part two. Otherwise, this could become a 40 minute video and I'm gonna try and stay away from those kind of videos. I appreciate you watching and I hope to see you in the part two video tomorrow. Have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye. Bye.